Hey, welcome back to Author Talk. I'm John Hartness. I'm the founder and publisher of Falstaff Books, and I'm here with three, and I got the number right this time. <laughs> I'm here with three of my friends. Y'all, tell everybody who the hell you are and why they should care. Misty, who are you? Uh, <laughs> I'm Misty Massey. I'm the author of the Mad Kestrel series of pirate fantasy adventures. And the editor of the forthcoming Nevermore anthology from that Falstaff too. Books. <laughs> that too. <laughs> and I'm a cast member on the Authors and Dragons podcast, so come listen to that when you're finished listening to this. That's right. Tally, who are you? I am Tally Johnson. I am a ghost storyteller extraordinaire. I am the author of Prequalkin, a Southern Gothic anthology from Falstaff Books, as well as four other books of Southern and South Carolina ghost lore. And Lucy, who are you? I am Lucy Blue. I am the goddess of Falstaff Crush, which is the romance line for Falstaff books. I'm also the author of The Devil Makes Three, which is one of our big fat horror books. It is, in fact, a big fat horror book with a big fat editor. Um, <laughs> so we wanted to talk a little bit about misconceptions people have about the South, about Southerners, and... Um, I don't know if y'all can tell from the accents, but we're all from the South. I grew up in the house we're shooting in, in rural South Carolina, and I brought all of my rural South Carolina <laughs> redneck writer friends over for tacos and videos. So they can't eat until we do the video. So let's talk about things people get wrong when they're writing about the South. Miss Missy, you had two, you said. So let's give us the give us the first and worst. Okay, the first one that gets on my nerves the worst is that we do not all sound the same. Just because most of us say y'all a lot does not mean that we are all from the same area. And somebody from Kentucky does not sound like somebody from North Carolina. And somebody from the North Carolina mountains does not sound like somebody from the North Carolina coast. And somebody from the South Carolina coast does not sound like somebody from um, West South Carolina. So we don't sound the same. And that drives me crazy when... You can hear that just in us. Yeah. Because yeah. you yeah. grew up in, in the low country, the low country South, South, Carolina. South Carolina. Yeah. Tally is a millbilly from the upstate. Lyman. Yeah. And we both grew up oh, in this part yeah, of, kind of the, Piedmont. the state, in kind of the Piedmont, the middle section yeah. of the up country. And we don't sound anything alike. No. Right. I no. speak Appalachian. Yes, you do. Yeah. Which is a whole different flavor of Southern. So you have to watch your, my lips to figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> and mm -hmm. the and the reason this is a pro important for writers to know is because, yes, you're writing a story, so we can't hear what your characters are saying. But you're using words and in, and idioms and slang that are specific to certain areas of the of the South. And um, again. That we sound different where, from wherever we come from. We also have different slang and different idioms and different different uh, stories that we tell from depending on where in the South we are. And so, even though you can't hear a book, you can still hear a book. Well, and from from where we grew up, our experiences were totally different than from where you grew up because right. growing up down in the Low Country and down near the coast. That's a whole different world whole different than world. Lyman or Bullet Creek or Chester or County. Chester, right. So, Tally, what's one of the things that you run into that people in books get wrong about the South? Despite the fact that I sound like I have never seen a printed book, not everybody in the South is stupid. Um, a sizable chunk of the people I know have college degrees. A bunch of the people sitting here have multiple college degrees or are close to it. And if you really want to make a Southerner mad, think we're stupid. And God help you if you say we're stupid. <laughs> Don't speak to us real slow and loud. <laughs> yeah, because, and in books especially, I've noticed that a, you can tell the Southern character in a book or a movie or a TV show because the IQ in the room drops 150 points as soon as that person speaks. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. I come from a working-class Southern background. Yeah. But I have a bachelor's in theater and half of a master's in arts administration. 
I'm not the guy who's going to tell you how to fix your the engine in your in your four wheeler. Four wheeler. My father could have probably fixed the engine in your four wheeler, but yeah. I left that life. I'm just like anyone from any other part of the country. Just like ev not everyone from South Boston is a gangster or even Irish. Not everyone from the South yeah. is a grease monkey or... Well, like me, I grew up in a house, literally, that had more books in it than anything else. And bless my poor wife, she lives in one now, too. And we're not talking, you know, the greatest hits of Zane Gray. I mean, we're talking about, like, religious theory and all this kind of stuff. So that's what I grew up reading. I mean, I read a Harlequin romance when I was, like, 14 and got physically ill because it sucked. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I had cut my teeth reading stuff like Levi Strauss and Daniel Bornstein and people like this. So, yeah, I mean, I've got a... BA in history plus everything but a thesis for history. Say I'm stupid and you'll see what a redneck really is. And that's a whole other <laughs> kettle that's a whole other kettle catfish. Right. But yeah, I mean, stupid we ain't. And the thing about it is we talk about college degrees and I have a, a master's in English. Um because I finished my thesis. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> but um oh, well that makes one of us. That's right. <laughs> Somebody had to, Show I off. took the bullet. Mm. But um my grandfather had an eighth grade education. He wore, you're talking about being a mechanic, he was the guy that went from one Springs Mill to the other fixing the machines. For Probably like, some of the machines my grandfather broke because he worked for right. the bleachery in Rock Hill. There you go. Um, but he read everything. For example, when I was in my second year of grad school, I was taking an advanced lit crit class and uh, I had lied and said I had read Tess of the Durbervilles. I saw the movie. Um, and I was getting ready to take the uh, GRE. And I had was getting ready to take orals. And that was something that I needed to know about. Well, I knew that there was a copy of that sitting on the shelf at my grandparents' house. So I assumed that my grandmother was the one who had read it. So I go over there, and she's like, yeah, I read that years and years ago. I don't remember that much about it. And um, my grandfather's sitting over in the corner reading, probably a Zane Gray, um, over in his rocking chair, and he goes, Angel Claire's a piece of shit that ain't worth killing. I said, what? He said, Everybody makes a big deal about Angel Claire being so pure. If Angel Claire had any ass at all, he would have rescued Tess and married her halfway through the book, and none of that other shit ever would have happened. <laughs> Welcome to Redneck Lit Crit 301. Right. <laughs> um, so when I get into my orals, and my, or my um, thesis was on fem was feminist. It doesn't matter. Anyway, um, it came up with, you know, because A.S. Byatt was my person that was like, okay, A.S. Byatt was very much anti D.H. Lawrence, Thomas Hardy, the, the classical or the 19th century and early 20th century British, male British novelists and their view of women. And I said, for example, I said, in the immortal words of my grandfather, Angel Clare wasn't worth shit. Uh, to Thomas Hardy, he was the hero of the book. But to anybody with half a brain, he is, he, he's another antagonist. Um, and they were very impressed. <laughs> they must have been. They gave you the diploma. Exactly. I got one. So, yeah. so yeah, college degree is great, and, but there are also an awful lot of people in the South who um, didn't go to college, but were extremely well read. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and especially the generation before ours, because there wasn't TV. Right. Yep, right. We were just talking before we started shooting that we're in a, we're sitting in a house where you couldn't get cell phone signal ten years ago. Mm -hmm. You you couldn't get cable television. You may still not be able to get cable television, even though there's freaking fiber internet running through the front yard. Which yes, I'm bitter because I don't have fiber and I live in the middle of Charlotte, and my sister lives here out in the middle of 
bumblefuck Egypt, and <laughs> she's got a fiber, she's got fiber internet, and. But hey, that's my soapbox. Anyway, <laughs> um, Lucy, what's one of your pet peeves that people get wrong about the South? Um, well, first of all, to build on what Misty was saying about you know, people assign a Southern vernacular to all Southern characters. <coughs> Please, for the love of Pete, don't write in dialect. Please don't Thank write God. in dialect. Yeah. Um, that, Especially that, if you want to get your shit produced for audio. Because right. your narrator will hate you. Because they're never going to get it right. There's nothing they're ever going to be able to do to interpret what you have written with all of your extra apostrophes that's going to sound like anybody who ever actually lived in the world. So yeah, please don't do that. But um, I want to talk about the harm that these stereotypes do. My husband is from Australia. He's from Adelaide, Australia. So he's Southern. Yeah, exactly. He's from South Australia. Um, <laughs> but when we got married, he had come over here, and when we got married... Um, we're talking to my mother-in-law on the telephone, as be actually before we were married. And, well, first of all, I had kind of gotten the clue that my future in-laws thought that he was coming over here to have sex with Daisy Duke. You know, that, 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 that <laughs> they um, really, really thought that that... Yes. Shush. We do not. Shush. I have never owned a cut-off jeans pair of shorts. I'm oh, sorry. I have a pair no. right. I have a pair right now, but they're not Daisy Duke. Um, <laughs> shush. In all seriousness, my mother-in-law goes, "Oh, well, did you catch it?" And we said, "No, they caught it and took it away to presumably exterminate it." Since that was because, oh, well, that's too bad. And I'm thinking, well, I know that my mother-in-law is a nature lover, but I said, well, possums here are not cute. She says, yeah, but y'all eat them, don't you? Oh, God. Ugh. And I said, no. I said, people probably in my family several generations back probably ate a possum or two. I said, but I have never in my life seen a possum cooked and, and, and eaten. But thank you. Um, and I definitely don't want right. one that's been in the attic chewing on my insulation. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, feels like that would add or bad texture. <laughs> you would think so. You would yeah. think so. But then, so she said, okay. Um, later conversation, she's like, I want to send you guys a wedding present. What's your style in your house? I said, well, we live in kind of a craftsman cottage, so it's kind of. Mid-century modern, also like all the Asian influence stuff. She goes, oh, okay. So we get this big box in the mail. Like, what in the world has she sent us? So we rip it open. It's a pot rack made of kind of rusted corrugated metal with a big-ass rooster on the top of it. Yes. Like, that sounds like some American Gothic level shit. Yeah. People all over the world have these misconceptions about the South, and it's because everything you see on movies and television and everything else. That's Just that. remember, y'all, whenever you go to McDonald's and you get that big sweet tea, you're fucking welcome. Alright? <laughs> you're fucking welcome. And Krispy Kreme? Bitch, the OG Krispy Kreme was two miles from my house. You're welcome, all right? And the day that you will finally be blessed with Cheerwine and Bojangles, <laughs> you will not know what fucking hit you. Um, seriously, I'm not saying that if you don't live in the South, you shouldn't write Southern characters. That, that's not what I'm saying Absolutely. at all. If you don't have personal knowledge of that, actually do some research, okay? Everybody who grew up around Charleston did not go to the St. Cecilia Ball. Nope. You know, everybody who came from upstate uh, South Carolina, Appalachian uh, Hills of North Carolina, ran moonshine. Now, some of y'all did, but not everybody. Some of us, you know, some of us um, drink it. And, <coughs> so, right you know, here. Mm. and the thing about yeah. it is, <laughs> Southerners are everywhere. You can find us wherever you uh, go. And um, obviously, we're willing to talk about down home. So, you know. It's just like Doctor Who said when he said, every planet has a north. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it's just like explaining why 
<laughs> a fucking space alien time traveler. <laughs> sounds like a cult Sounds mother. like he grew up in the same town as A.J. Hartley. Right. Because right. Eccleston did. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Same yeah. thing, you yeah. know. We're happy to talk about the South. Hell, half the time he can't get us to shut up. Exactly. Now, but uh, going back to what Gail you know, said about the um, dialect, don't write in dialect. If you want proof of that, look at the WBA files and the Writers Project files from back in the 30s. They interviewed all the living ex slaves they could find and Southern natives for the books. Their travel guides, their cookbooks, they're wonderful. You're talking to someone who has a college degree, a professional African American, and they sound like a gullah filled hand from Faulkner's Nightmares, or right. the or the part or the nineteen thirties movie based yeah. there on, or that the part they cut from Gone with the Wind because this is a little bit too racist, right? <laughs> right. And the, the, that reading professional folklorists, authors transcribe these things, that should put you off any concept of dialect henceforth. Because trust me, I've read them all. The only thing worse than trying to decipher those or trying to decipher the accents they use for the folks who live in New York City. Yeah. yeah. But, and they're trying to capture the flavor, but it's like um, Misty was saying before, instead of using dialect, instead of using alternative spellings or, or, or trying to spell things phonetically, Use idioms, mm -hmm. use uh, word choice, use vocabulary, because there are things that are very specific to every region that uh, a person from that region, if you use it, is going to know immediately, yeah, I, I can hear that voice in my head, yeah. I can hear right. that accent, I don't need you to spell it phonetically, I can hear it. Another trick for that is to establish it and let it fade. Right. If right. the first time someone, a character appears, and the character has a heavy accent, if the first time they appear, they speak in dialect, but then it fades because as you, a human being, are in a room listening to people, mm -hmm. what may sound like a heavy accent at the beginning doesn't sound accented right. at all 30 minutes into a conversation with that, people. Because at that point they've become that person instead of that accent. That accent. Exactly. And right. from an editorial point of view, when you write in dialect, half the time there are no there are no set rules as this is how I write this dialect because all dialects have different sounds and different stresses. And so when you try to write in dialect and an editor looks at it, the editor's going um, why is there an apostrophe here? Where are the letters? I don't know what this is supposed to be saying. And half the time I will look at a page that's full of dialect and not have a clue what it's trying to sound like. And, yeah. and as an editor, that makes me want to stab you with a sharp pencil. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So those are a few tips and tricks for writing Southerners and things that maybe you can avoid when you're writing people like us. So let us know in the comments if you want a part two or if you would be interested in hearing from other writers about misconceptions about other parts of the world or country or other cultures. We're happy to, we're happy to sit in front of a video camera and tell you what you're fucking up. <laughs> <laughs> Till next time. Peace.